大家好，欢迎大家来到今日点击的特别节目，呃，坦克人的故事，我是石涛。那今天呢是六月一号，二十五年过去，八九六四，截止到现在，就是在众多的中国人的现实生活当中，一个没有结果，今天依然在追寻着结果的真实的生命过程。那这一段生命过程。到现在，他的真相都没有揭示出来。每一个人在那一段时间里面，都有着自己切身的体会，因为在当时而言，全国几百个城市都被卷入了这样的浪潮。那当时的浪潮叫反贪腐、反官岛，那追求民主、追求人权。没有那么明确的追求人权，但是非常清晰的要追求民主。而八九六四到今天呢，四分之一的世纪过去了，当年的学生都已经步入了不惑之年，而作为我们这一批，也就是所谓的改革开放的第一批大学生，是今天中国社会的脊梁。这批人。经历过文革的残酷的环境，这批人经过改革开放的那样的，很少有能够呼吸到新鲜空气的氛围。那个新鲜空气的氛围是指人们精神与心灵在文化大革命的背背景之下，那种压抑之下而突然被释放，看到了一丝光彩。我指的是那样的新鲜的氛围，而这批人又经历过改革开放的所谓的年代，而同样是这批人看到了八九六四的真实的故事。那就在这一段时间里面，我在我在寻找八九六四的片子当中的时候，看到了一个片子，是当时八九六四时在现场的。那些具体的人，那些西方记者所制作的一个片子，他们用他们自己切身的经历和保存下来的珍贵的资料，那录制了这一个半小时的片子。那因为是在网络上，因为是英文的，有好心人把它翻译成中文。那我们就利用这一段时间，八九六四的前后这几天的时间，跟大家分享这个影片，因为我注意到中国人。大陆人真实看到这个片子的人还是少数，而这个片子当中，他主要拿出来的就是被后来人称为称作叫“王维林”只身党坦克的人。那作为编导，以他以寻找这个党坦克的人作为主线，描述了过去十几年里二十几二十年当中。在中国社会所发生的大的变革，但是这个变革与真正寻找真相之间的关系和纽带。那我们就今天跟大家分享第一集《坦克人》故事。Tonight on Frontline, Tiananmen Square, June 1989, people started to scream at us, take pictures, take video. Tell the world what's going on. They're killing innocent people. In the wake of a bloody crackdown on pro-democracy demonstrators, one solitary man defied the awesome power of the Chinese state. This man just went out and said, "Stop!" and the tank stopped. But who was he? He said he stood for the ordinary people. And what happened to him? He just melted into the crowd and he was gone. Tonight. Veteran filmmaker Anthony Thomas investigates the fate of this heroic figure. For every year, we also followed every lead, and explores the bold gamble of China's leaders to quell the spirit of Tiananmen. How do you prevent the fire from spreading? Through their open embrace of capitalism. It is an amazing miracle what has happened since 1989. Tough political repression. If you ever seen security people manhandle a Chinese citizen. They're really brutal. And strict censorship of the media, but not one single image of Tank Man. Leading U.S. companies like Google, Yahoo, 
Cisco and Microsoft have compromised their duties as responsible corporate citizens. This was not something that we did enthusiastically or not something that we're proud of at all. Tonight on Frontline, the story behind one of the most powerful images of our time. What this young man did was in effect change the world. A search for the meaning and the mystery of the Tank Man. Tiananmen Square, Beijing, the largest public space in the world, created on an inhuman scale. The monumental public buildings that line the edges and the vast treeless spaces in between speak of the insignificance of the individual before the might of the state. The atmosphere here is edgy. Even with permits and government minders, our filming is constantly interrupted. Soldiers, policemen, men in plain clothes all demand our papers. The authorities here are afraid of cameras. They know their power. They have hundreds of them trained on Tiananmen Square. Their cameras. Cameras in other hands are considered dangerous and with good reason. This place can be a powder keg. On a June night in 1989, Tiananmen Square was a war zone. The People's Liberation Army fought its way into Beijing from four directions with orders to converge on the square. Unarmed citizens and students faced armored personnel carriers, tanks, and soldiers armed with semi-automatic weapons. By 5.30 a.m. on June 4, 1989, the Army's mission had been accomplished. Gradually, the dawn came up. In Beijing, you know how misty it is, smoggy. This wasn't a sunrise. This was like a grayness gradually acquiring some sort of light. Where all this life had been was this quadrangle of tanks facing out. All the students were gone. And I just stood there and I watched. T.D. Ullman was staying at this Beijing hotel, which has a commanding view of Shangan Avenue, the Avenue of Eternal Peace, that runs directly into Tiananmen Square. On these balconies, Western reporters and photographers had crouched, often under gunfire, to record the events of the night of June 3rd, 4th. Then, at noon on the 5th, when the army seemed in complete control, something remarkable happened on Shangan Avenue, immediately below. The tanks danced. It was obscene. It was like an obscene dance. They just didn't roll out. They swiveled around. God knows why they did that. And then the moment came which has intrigued you and fascinated and moved the world. You stand there and you're looking down, this tank's coming out, it's got its uh, gun up. And this man just went out and he said, stop. It's absolutely extraordinary. You could look at him as unusually brave. But he probably wasn't. He was probably just an ordinary person who was so disgusted at what he had seen for the last few days. And he said, right, that's it. I'm going out and I'm going to just stand in front of that column. The tank did not try to just run him over. It turned to go around him. And then the young man jumps in front of the tank. And then the tank turns the other way and the young man jumps the other side. They did this a couple of times and then the tank turned off its motor. And then it seemed to me that all the tanks turned off their motors because uh, it was really quiet. Standing in front of a column of tanks, no one around him. He was all on his own with his shopping bag in his hand. He climbed on top of the tank, banged on the lid, said, get out of my city. You're not wanted here. We don't know exactly what he said, but it's clear that's what he wanted to say. 
And I started to cry because I had seen so much shooting and so many people dying that I was sure this man would get crushed. So I remember thinking, I can't cry because I can't see. I want to watch this. During this time, I'm thinking, this guy is going to be killed any moment now. And if he is, I just can't miss this. This is something that he's giving his life for. It's my responsibility to record it as accurately as possible. And then after a while, the young man jumps down, and the tank turns on the motor, and the young man blocks him again. I thought, he's just going to get crushed. I相信看过第一集的朋友被整个场面所震动了。坦克人是谁？他现在在哪儿？活着、死了，要给世界一个交代。